The Dark Ages were not as dark as you might have thought. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Western world was plunged into the Dark Ages, experiencing around 1,000 years of cultural decline and stagnancy. Except it didn't. The millennium known as the Medieval Period, stretching from approximately 500 CE to 1500 CE, was actually full of fascinating events and advancements, many of which still affect our lives today. Here are the top 10 most important events in medieval history. Number 1. The Anno Domini calendar was invented. Anno Domini, usually shortened to AD, is Latin for in the year of our Lord. It is sometimes referred to as after death, and this is a seeming misnomer since all the years before 1 AD are referred to as BC or before Christ. During the early medieval period, a monk from the Eastern Roman Empire called Dionysius Exiguus decided that he no longer wanted to use the Diocletian years, which were currently being used in his area of the world. At the time, different countries counted their years independently, with each region having a completely different yearly system. Diocletian was a Roman emperor that was particularly cruel to Christians, so Exiguus was hoping to eradicate any memory of it. Exiguus established that his current year was 525 years after the birth of Jesus Christ. Thus, it would be known as the Year of Our Lord 525, although how he determined this year is unknown. This system did not catch on immediately, but Europe converted to the Anno Domini calendar by the end of the medieval period. Today, the world still uses this calendar to date the current year and global historical events. Nowadays, some historians have stepped away from the Christian connotations of BC and AD, using BCE and CE instead. The new abbreviations mean before current era and current era. However, the numbering of the years remain faithful to the calendar invented by Dionysius Exiguus. 2. The Treaty of Verdun 43 years before this treaty, Charlemagne had been crowned the King of the Holy Roman Empire, a direct challenge to the Byzantine Empire. The treaty was essentially the dissolution of Charlemagne's empire by his warring grandchildren. This treaty was the foundation of many modern European countries. Charlemagne's heir, Louis I, had four sons. Three of these were from his first marriage and one from his second. These four children were constantly vying for power, and his youngest, Charles the Bald, caused controversy in the family when Louis I granted him lands, much to the chagrin of his other sons. Louis I outlived one of his sons, and after his death, his three remaining sons divided the empire amongst them. Charles and his half-brother, Louis the German, forced their oldest brother, Lothair, to sign the Treaty of Verdun in 843 CE, which divided the land between them, rather than the empire passing to the eldest alone. The Western Empire was given to Charles, the East to Louis the German, with the fertile lands of the middle going to Lothair. Eventually, the territory belonging to Charles would become France, and Louis's country became known as Germany. But the prized land belonging to Lothair, known as Lotharingia, fragmented. These lands would eventually become a part of the Netherlands, Belgium, and large parts of Germany, France, and Switzerland. 3. The Invention of Gunpowder While experimenting with elixirs in an attempt to lengthen life, alchemists in China found something that would cut short a great many lives in the centuries to come. In around 850 CE, Chinese scientists accidentally invented gunpowder and changed the course of history as we know it. References to gunpowder had been made in China before this, but this was the first time it was realized for its properties. The Chinese used this explosive new substance to expel the Mongols from China. It is now thought that it was the psychological as well as the physical effects of this seemingly magical weapon that helped to defeat the Mongols. Gunpowder remained the best-kept secret of China until the 13th century, when the science behind it traveled up the Silk Road to the Christian and Islamic worlds. By 1350, the English and French armies commonly had cannons as part of their arsenal. Gunpowder was responsible for the fall of Constantinople in 1453 when fortifications that have been impregnable for centuries crumbled. Gunpowder is still used in military applications today. But gunpowder didn't just change the way we fought wars, it changed the way we celebrate. New Year's Eve, Independence Day, Eid el Adha, Diwali, and many other occasions would look very different if it weren't for this medieval invention. 4. Ibn Sina writes the Canon of Medicine 
Ibn Sina, also known as Avicenna, was a Muslim philosopher, physician, and scientist. Born in 980 in modern-day Uzbekistan, he became influential and famous throughout the medieval Islamic world. Ibn Sina was something of a child prodigy, having memorized the Quran by the age of 10 and beginning his studies of medicine at 16. After mastering the discipline while still in his teens, he was able to cure the Sultan of Bukhara. The latter, in gratitude, gave Ibn Sina access to the Royal Samanid Library, which further opened up the world of science and philosophy. Ibn Sina began writing at the age of 21 and authored numerous famous texts. In 1025, he completed his five-book canon of medicine, Al-Qunan fi Al-Tib, one of the most renowned series of books in the history of medicine. Hailed as the father of early modern medicine, his texts were the dominant source of study throughout Europe and the Islamic world. The canon of medicine was in use in some areas well into the 19th century. 5. The Invention of Movable Type Many people will cite the Gutenberg printing press in 1439 as the first instance of movable type that would start an information revolution in which books could be easily printed and distributed. Movable type allowed books to be produced cheaply and quickly. Before the printing press, books in Europe were either transcribed by hand or printed from wood blocks that contained an entire page. However, movable type had already been invented. In China, around 1041, Bai Shan came up with the concept of movable type. He put Chinese symbols into porcelain clay, which he then kiln fired. The characters could then be arranged and rearranged to print messages onto silk. Bai Sheng rejected wooden type blocks as he found they produced uneven results, but wooden blocks became the most popular form of movable type in China. Historians suppose that this may have been because the wood blocks were easier to produce than the porcelain ones. Chinese printers began to use bronze for their movable type around the 12th century, and they were primarily used for printing money and official documentation. We can only speculate as to whether Johann Gutenberg knew of the Chinese printing methods when he started to build his printing press. Whatever the case, the invention of movable type led to shared knowledge and increased literacy worldwide. However, this did not happen in Gutenberg's lifetime. Unfortunately for Johann Gutenberg, he had created a mass production method for a product that had a minimal market. He died penniless without seeing the vast impact of his work. 6. Zizi Tongjin Published Sima Guang was born November 17, 1019, in what is now the Guangshan province of China. He grew up to be a poet, scholar, and statesman and compiled the Zizi Tongjin, Comprehensive Mirror for Aid of Governance. This monumental text chronicles Chinese history from 403 BCE to 959 CE and is considered one of the best Chinese historical texts. His work mainly focuses on political events, but it also describes other rites, music, geography, economy, and astronomy. He was so meticulous in his work that he compiled a companion piece called the Kayoi, Scrutiny, which listed any discrepancies among his sources and why he chose to believe a particular version of events. The Zizi Tongjin remains an important historical reference and has influenced Chinese historians since its publication. 7. Moses ben Maimon writes Mishnah Torah Moses ben Maimon, also known as Maimonides, was born in Cordoba, Spain on March 30, 1135. Like Ibn Sina, he was an intellectual figure at a young age impressing his teachers with his depth and versatility. When he was 13, a fanatical Islamic sect called the Almohads captured Cordoba and forced any religion other than Muslim underground. Moses and his family managed to move and evade persecution until they finally came to Egypt, where they could openly practice their Jewish faith. Moses turned to medicine to support himself and his family after the deaths of his father and brother. His contributions to medicine, religion, and philosophy have a lasting influence to this day. Moses wrote many texts, and at 33, he undertook his magnum opus, the Mishnah Torah, translated as the Torah Revised. The text took him 10 years to finish and was finally completed in 1180. The text comprises of 14 volumes, commenting on many subjects such as civil laws, ethical conduct, physics, psychology, astronomy, and much more. Moses intended this text to be a guide to the entire system of Jewish law, 
and he wanted to make it accessible to everyone rather than being reserved just for scholars. After some initial criticism, it soon became an influential reference for ritual decisions and is still an important work in the Jewish community. 8. Genghis Khan Becomes Ruler of the Mongols Genghis Khan was born around 1162. His birth name was Temujin, and he suffered a challenging and brutal upbringing. But by 1206, he had amassed many followers and was proclaimed Universal Ruler, or Chinggis Khan, which became his official title. Due to his diplomatic tactics, Genghis Khan rose to prominence despite his fearsome reputation, which went against the traditional nepotism and favored skill over kin when appointing his generals. He soon united all the tribes of the Mongolian steppes under his rule. While Genghis Khan might be remembered best for the fear he instilled in his enemies, he was, in reality, a pretty progressive ruler. He abolished inherited power to stop the leading cause of tribal warfare and brought in many laws. Enslavement to Mongols was outlawed, and the kidnap or selling of women was forbidden. Genghis also made livestock theft a crime punishable by death. He established a system of writing, conducted a census, and granted diplomatic passports to foreign ambassadors. His subjects enjoyed religious freedom, and although Genghis Khan himself was a Tengrist, he was followed by Christians, Muslims, and Buddhists alike. Admittedly, Genghis Khan was also a ferocious warrior and he expanded his empire with brute force. However, he maintained it through diplomacy and trade, enhancing and protecting the Silk Road, an essential part of the trade industry throughout the Middle Ages. The Silk Road also played a significant role in causing the last two events on our list. 9. The Black Death From 1346 to 1353, the Black Death, otherwise known as the Bubonic Plague, traveled down the Silk Road and ravaged Europe. It is estimated that around half the European population died during the epidemic, with severely hit areas losing up to 80% of their inhabitants. While the Black Death may be a grim and tragic event, it had surprising consequences on our modern world. The main impact regarded workers' rights. Before the plague, many people believed that God chose who would be rich or poor. This line of thought meant that the poor did not question their lot, and the rich didn't need to feel guilty for their lifestyle. Peasants were in abundance, so the competing workforce dared not assert any demands on their employers. After the plague, the rich and poor had died indiscriminately, and the once surplus labor supply had dwindled. Workers started demanding basic rights and the end of serfdom. The Peasants' Revolt in 1381 started society on the road to better pay for workers and greater freedoms for all. 10. Columbus Sails to America after the Mongol Empire had fragmented, parts of the Silk Road came under the control of different countries. In 1453, the Ottoman Turks boycotted trade with China and closed various routes. Wanting to find a new way to trade with the East, a renowned seafarer called Christopher Columbus decided to find a new way to the Indies by sailing westward to China and Japan. In 1492, Columbus and his fleet of three ships sailed into the unknown to find fame and riches. Their voyage would change the world and herald the end of the medieval period. Did you agree with our picks for the top 10 events in medieval history? If not, leave a comment below and tell us what event would have made your top 10. To learn more about medieval history, check out our book, The Middle Ages, a captivating guide to the history of Europe, starting with the fall of the Western Roman Empire through the Black Death to the beginning of the Renaissance. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, Grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.